What do you do when learning becomes difficult on guitar and you suddenly feel discouraged that you're not improving enough or you're not making enough progress or you should be further along, whatever it is you're feeling? Well, in this lesson, I'm gonna bring you through three simple steps that you can take today to examine how you feel around making progress on guitar. So you're gonna have more fun learning and make more progress while not feeling so discouraged. So let's take a look. Got my trusty board on the go here, okay? So when learning becomes difficult, that's the general topic I'm gonna to cover here. And um, I wanna say thanks so much to messages I've gotten from people who have opened up about feeling discouraged because the reality is you're not alone. I do remember feeling discouraged on guitar as well as I learned it. And I remember some days being brilliant and other days I'd be questioning had I made any progress. So I want to say thanks for opening up and sharing and I hope you'll find value in this lesson and anybody else watching at any other point in time. These principles are timeless. So you see here I have ease and challenge written on the board. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is what we want to do is we want to find a balance or find that balance, we'll say, or the, <laughs> find the balance, okay? Find the balance between ease and challenge. When you begin guitar, you're presented with cards and it's like, hey, can you put this on and play this? And there's a lot of mini achievements that you get going and it works. And then we kind of get to what I call like the messy middle where we're kind of around here and guitar was nice to start out with and we're seeing things on the internet and they're super challenging to play so we don't go near them and we're kind of here now the problem can come especially when learning online without a proper step-by-step -step method uh, it can come from you start out with the mini steps and all of a sudden then you have a song learned and you go searching for more songs and this is where you could have been going around nicely here, making progress with smiley face, right? Moving around. And next thing you are here, the next song you found is here. And songs don't contain ratings, let's say, online. Like they can be beginner, intermediate, advanced, but like they're, they're quite vague terms at the end of the day. So all of a sudden now you're missing this skill set. You are here, it, the song is here, you're missing these skills. And then you're left kind of struggling and missing things or maybe wondering what habits and technique and that's where the feeling of discouragement can originate from. Uh, there's not getting things on guitar, but there's also not getting them because you were missing maybe a few mini steps along the way to get in there, right? So that's the first thing to find the balance. How can you find the balance? Well. YouTube can't be categorized <laughs> um, like memberships like for example this is a video within the membership and I can structure videos bit by bit but if you're still learning on the internet that's cool too and what I used to do is I learned on Ultimate Guitar in I think it was 2001 and I quickly found that that I was becoming discouraged because I didn't know how to get to this song when I was only able to play to this ability. I took a pen and paper and I wrote, and there's no iPad Pros back then, I took a pen and paper and I made a big long list of songs that I wanted to learn. And I knew that all the songs were of different levels of ability. And what I began to do is when I'd le begin learning a song, if I was having difficulty, I'd kind of go, I'll get back to that song a Queen song, another one bites the dust. I could play the riff, but not the funk guitar yet. And, but I was labeling the songs. And that meant then, after I'd passed through enough songs, my abilities grew. And encouragement can grow when you're making bits of progress here and there, and then start coming back to the songs to revisit them. So make a list of songs, that can really help. So that's finding the balance between ease and challenge. Too much ease, you'll still get discouraged because you look around you and see other players making progress and you won't be. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily hang around in the ease category too much. Too much challenge, 
you won't make progress, you'll get discouraged and you won't continue. So it's all about finding the little balances in between. Now, number two, this is all about calling out for help. No, <laughs> call out your thoughts. Quite a common statement and question I get from students of mine is, I feel discouraged. I can feel it like, I feel discouraged. Now we can sit in the feeling of discouragement and try and like change how we feel. But if we take a step ahead of that and go, well, is there anything you're thinking that causes this feeling of discouragement? And 99% of the time with one or two questions, we kind of get to the root of it. And it's usually a thought that a student is having around their playing or their ability. And that's what causes the feeling of discouragement as well. So looking at it, like for example, if I do this, we we'll go down to the little rough work down here. I should be much farther along. That's quite a common one I hear students say sometimes. I should be much farther along in my playing. I'm looking online and I'm in Facebook groups and I'm seeing players on YouTube who played for a month and then they could play the Hotel California solo. Or I'm seeing this other player, a friend of mine who started at the same time and they're learning stuff that I can't play it. I should be much further along. Now, this is where, like, I'm a, sometimes I'm a fan of like tough love where I like, and I say this, you giving yourself tough love, not, not, other, not allowing other people to dish it out to you. Like, um, when examine the thought, so you're feeling discouraged, go to the thought, what is it I'm thinking that might be causing me to feel discouraged? and try and put that thought in a, in a coherent sentence. So in our case, I should be much further along. The first thing to do with that is to say to yourself, who says, who says you should be much further along? If it was possible to line up 10 students I've taught over a two year period and ask them what their exact journey was on guitar, I can guarantee you they all had different journeys like, let's say, I'm going to make up names here. Uh, classic Joe Bloggs, John Smith. You know the type, right? So let's say um, I asked John Smith. I'm like, hey, John, what was your journey like the past two years? And John might reply, well, I started out really fast. And then I, I don't know, I hit a snag for like two months. I got into a bad patch. But I kind of found my way out again and I made more progress. Where's Joe Bloggs then? He might have started off really slow and said, well, you know, for example, this is a common one. Um, my partner had a child and we're up late at night and I didn't get as much practice done on guitar as I wanted. So the first three months were rough enough. I was only doing a bit. But then after that, like once I started getting more sleep, I started to practice more and I made progress. Now, we'll take the two here. This is John. This is Joe. John's progress might've gone like this. Straight off the bat, up he goes. Bit of a dip, up again. Ah, oh, come on iPad, don't do this to me. See what I mean? It's, ah, oh, you don't see what I mean because this thing is acting up. There we go. Watch. The whole time though, he's on an upwards trajectory. Kind of like stocks, really. <laughs> Even though at the, at the minute, if you're a stock fan, it's, uh, it's quite down the way. <laughs> so. We got Joe then who started off here and then a bit of progress here, major progress, maybe a bit of a dip, maybe he took a break over a summer or something. Then he started to get here, here, here. See what I mean? It's like, it's the same type of progress. It's, it's not linear, like it just doesn't go straight up. So whatever your thought is, call yourself out on it and go, who says that I should be further along? And who says I should be able to do this right now? Because the thing is, the reality is, whatever it is you're struggling with, the reality is you can't do it right now. But instead of sitting in the feeling of discouragement, look at it and go, well, think of the progress and 
ask yourself that question. Who says I should be further along? And a lot of the time it's comparison. And we're getting the comparisons from YouTube, from Instagram, from TikTok, wherever you're watching guitarists. Because guess what? All, well, all the ones in my feed anyways are of guitarists who can play like eight guitars with one hand. It's, it's never of a guitarist who's making their G to C chord like this. You know, like that, that isn't on our feeds. We get presented the shiny, the brilliant, the amazing, and quite animated, like people make it look like it's super duper easy. So just keep that in mind because we are in the age of social media, like so. That's our progress, bear. And the other thing to ask yourself about this when you call out your thoughts is rephrase the question, reframe it. What can I do differently to be able to play this? What can I do differently? What can I practice differently? Ask yourself those questions. The quality of the questions is the quality of your playing. That's super important to remember. I'll say it one more time. The quality of your questions determines the quality of your playing. Ask yourself higher quality questions and you will find higher quality answers. Now, boarding on the rant here, sorry folks, but passionate about this because I see so many players out there who get discouraged and who stop. And I've talked with enough adults late at night after a gig in a bar when they tell me stories that I did play guitar, but I kind of quit. I gave up. I wasn't getting any better. Like uh, that, that kills me. Like <laughs> it kills me because I see how much enjoyment guitar can bring for people um, when they go about it the right way. Now, the last question to ask yourself when you're calling out your thoughts is who else has thought this same thing? Okay, or I'll phrase it better like who, who else has had this problem? You're not alone. You aren't the only person in the world who felt discouraged about their playing because of bar chords, uh, because of finger picking, because of learning the C chord. Oh my God, who invented that chord? You know what I mean? Um, so ask yourself, who else has dealt with this? And like, for example, I have, I have dealt with it. And I remember the feeling and I remember the day when I saw a B7 written on a board in school. I was 12. And I remember looking at that board going, why is there four dots on the card diagram? Why? Who invented this card? It's absolute evil. <laughs> so I remember those days. Um, and the thing is, ask if who else has gone through it and ask them for advice. Ask me for advice. I'm happy to answer. Ask other members within this community for advice. You are not alone. So those are a few bits around calling out your thoughts because the thoughts come ahead of the feeling. Um, and the feelings do cause thoughts but there's a thought at play, so go and find it, call it out, okay? Uh, so that's find the balance between ease and challenge, call out your thoughts, and the last one then is search for positive proof. Search for positive proof no, not that not that learning is difficult <laughs> because we have proof of that there, right? Search for positive proof to suggest otherwise, to suggest that you are improving, that your playing doesn't completely suck, that your playing isn't stuck in a rut now and this is as far as you will go. Search for proof that will suggest otherwise. Um, how can you do this? You can search for proof by First of all, video yourself playing. Oh my God, I wish I had like more videos of my playing journey. I don't, I have about four and it documents me playing four Oasis cards and the next video is me shredding out the Hotel California solo three years later. All the messy middle, all the setbacks, all the struggles, all the absolute crap playing, that, that's missing. Um, so for you, Video yourself playing, video yourself playing, save it in a folder and date them or you'll, you'll get a feel for the date. When you're feeling discouraged, go back to that vault of proof that you are playing, you can play, like you are improving. Go back to it, watch it and think good thoughts about your playing. 
and I'll feel better. And even write down things, like make a list of 10 things that you think is really great about your playing that somebody else in the world right now is struggling with. I've talked with so many students that like they get their G, E minor, C and D and then they go, oh my God, I'm trying to learn F and I'm so stuck on guitar right now. I'm so feeling discouraged. And oh my God, if I could bring them to meet a student then that's learning C for the first time and it's like completely caving in their world that they're like, oh my God, this card is such a stretch. See what I mean? Like contrast. So for you, you got to search for the positive proof. Take videos. Um, for example, I was talking with somebody lately and like nice things people have said to you about your playing, play for people. Nice things that people have said to you about your playing, write them down, remember them. And just get into the feeling of how it felt at the time to receive that compliment about your playing. And that's why in my membership, I'm so big on students sharing videos of yourselves playing to get encouragement, to get feedback, to get improvement. And it builds connection too, which just makes the guitar even nicer. So search for positive proof. Um, and then the other thing is that's videos. The small other bit of proof you can build on is documenting your numbers. For example, I, man, I remember the day that I learned Flight of the Bumblebee and <laughs> when, I'm going to play it roughly. So, something like that. Come on, fingers. Okay, I remember starting learning that song and straight off the bat, I went, that's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen next week, next month. Um, I got to track metronome numbers. So log your BPM of the tempo that you can play a piece at and look at the original tempo of the song. Like for example, more than words, I think is 92. Something like that. Log the original BPM of it and document your progress through. So now you're not going from, and this is positive proof as well, you're not going from, I can't play it yet. You're going from, I can play it at 70 BPM and I can bump it up a bit to 74 and I'm on the way to 90 or 92. It's not going to happen next week, but I'm on the way. That builds encouragement. So let's recap these points. Number one, when learning becomes difficult, find the balance, okay? Walk the fine balance between ease and challenge. Number two, call out your thoughts. Whatever thoughts are calling, causing this feeling of discouragement, call them out. Say, who says? And look to see where the positive proof is. Otherwise, that suggests that you are really making progress, that you are progressing along on guitar. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, Kind of went on a bit of a rant, sorry about that, but you know, uh, these things happen from time to time. And remember that graph of the two? John and Joe, John Smith and Joe Bloggs. I have to wonder out there, like, I think I knew a John Smith once, but like, Joe Bloggs, I wonder is there anybody in the world called Joe Bloggs? Hey, if there's Joe Bloggs in the world, post a comment below. <laughs> so, thanks so much for watching. And um, of course, keep the questions coming in the community and the membership, and you're not alone. You'll get through it, I promise you. Take care.